Hi, today I want to show you the new LangChain expression language. The LangChain expression language is a new declarative way to create chains. So instead of creating objects and passing them around as arguments, you can use the pipe operator to compose chains together. I will walk you through some examples and give you my two cents about this new topic. You will find the link to the code in the description. Okay, I'm here in VS Code and as you can see, I'm in the LangChain expressions IPython notebook. Before we start coding, we will have to import our OpenAI API key. So that's done with the load.env function. The API key is stored in my .env file and you have to use your own API key, of course. Okay, let's first import the LLM chain and chat prompt template and chat OpenAI class because we will first create a chain the normal way. So first we create an LLM, we will create a prompt and then we will use the LLM chain class and pass in the LLM and the prompt as argument. After that, we will run the predict function, give in input, and we want to create a joke about a pig. So let's run this. And as you can see, this returns a string. Okay, that was the normal way to create a chain. We will now use the LangChain expression language. In the LangChain expression language, this works a little bit different. Here we have a prompt variable, and we pipe it with the pipe operator to the LLM. This will create a chain and this new chain object has an invoke method and we have to pass in the input from the chat prompt template here and pass it like this as a dictionary. So we can first create our chain and then pass the value, the input value here in this format. So if you run this, this will result in the same output, at least technically from the LLM, but the difference is that this uh, makes use of the AI message class and we get back a content property which contains our string. So to recap, because this is new, we have our input variable which will be passed to the prompt and the output from the prompt will be passed to the LLM and this will result in our AI message here. If you don't want uh, that AI message class here, you don't have to extract it, but you can pass it to one of the output parsers of LangChain. For example, this works fine with the str output parser, so this is for strings. And we use again the same way like before, so we have our chain. Now our chain is a prompt, which will be then piped to the LLM, and the output of the LLM will be piped to the str output parser class. So this will be instantiated here, and then we again run the invoke method. And as you can see, the difference now is that we don't have our AI message class with the content property, but we just have a string. So this can be done as well. We can also extend the functionality of the LLM by intercepting it with the bind method. And as you can see here, we've got a new prompt. Tell me five jokes about this input. But we can say if we've got a new line, the LLM should stop. So if we run this and pass the output to the output parser, we will not get five results, but only the first one because uh, the LLM will write everything in a new line and the result is now here, the first result. So instead of uh, getting five results, we only get the first one here. We can also use OpenAI functions in combination with the LangChain expression language. And we've got a list of functions here, which actually only contains a single dictionary. So a single function, the name is joke, the description is a joke, and the properties are here setup and punchline. And the description here is the punchline for the joke and the setup for the joke. So we pass it here as required arguments for the OpenAI functions. First, we create this list. And then again, we intercept here the LLM. So we've got our prompt. And now we have to pipe this prompt to the LLM. And we have to use the bind method here to actually tell the LLM which function to use here. And as you can see, we use the name joke here and we pass in the functions as third argument here. And since the new OpenAI functions return a JSON object, we can pipe that output from the LLM to the JSON output functions parser, and this will create our new chain. So let's run the chain here. And now we can see we get back this result. So this is not a JSON object, but a Python dictionary. Okay, now let's work with vector stores. Here we've got a little example 
for a vector store which contains information about cats. And as you can see here, we first create the vector store and then we convert the vector store as a retriever object. So let's do this first. And then we have our template with context. This is the information from the vector store and then the question. This is the question from the user. We will create a new prompt template for this. And then we've got a new chain and we also got a new object here. The new object here is runnable pass through. Why do we need this? Uh, we first pass in the original input here, how old is the oldest cat, and we want to pass it along as a string. We don't want to pass it as property of some object, but always as a string. So we pass this the same way as it is from here and pass it to this prompt as string. So this is where the runnable pass through class comes in handy. Since the prompt template contains two uh, variables here, we also have to do it like this to pass it as a dictionary because we don't have a single input. So we use the output of the retriever, which is the context here. So the key has to match the input variable here. And the question is another key in a dictionary. This has to match the second variable in the prompt template. So we pass in this to the prompt. So this is the result of the retriever and also the question itself, pass it here to the prompt. This will be, will be passed to the LLM and the output of the LLM will be passed to the string output parser. So this is the way this chain works. Let's invoke it. And as you can see, this is our result. The oldest cat is 38 years old. We can achieve the same functionality with the item getter from operator or with a Lambda function. So let's introduce this. What we get here is first we create a dictionary with two keys and two values. And this item getter with blah here will not retrieve the actual element, but uh, will create a function. And we have to use that function. So we, we create it here, call it get blah, and we then pass in the dictionary itself. And this will actually then retrieve the correct value. And this can be used now in a chain. So we've got a new template with three variables, context, question, and also language as third one. So instead of using the runnable pass through, we can use item getter, or we can use a Lambda function like this. And for this example here, we pass in the context directly to a retriever. So inside this first chain, we already use another chain. So we pass in a question to the retriever. This returns then the correct context. We pass the question as it is, and we also pass the language as it is. This will be passed then to the prompt. This will be passed to the LLM and again passed to the str output parser. Again, we invoke it like this. So we use the invoke method, we pass in a dictionary question and also the language. As you can see, we don't use context here because the context is actually created in this dictionary itself. So we pass in this Lambda function, this will be passed to the retriever and this will create the context here. We can also work with tools, for example, DuckDuckGo search. So let's first install that. And after installing it, we can import from LangChain the DuckDuckGo search class and instantiate it. So we've got here our search tool now. And now we create a more simple template, for example, like this with a single input, turn the following user input into a search query for a search engine. And then we pass in the prompt to the LLM, which will be passed to the output parser and that will be now passed to the search tool. So let's do this. And then we ask, what's the name of the oldest cat? So for example, this should be searched in the internet now. And we get back from this. Okay, the oldest cat is called netyem, meaning sweet. So that's the result of the search tool. We can also work with arbitrary functions so we can define our own functions. So in this example, we have a length function, which returns the length of a text and also the length of multiple texts. And then another function, which takes in the inputs here from a dictionary. So we pass in a dictionary to this function and this calls under the hood these functions. So to make this work, we have to use the runnable Lambda class. So first we create a new prompt with two input variables. What is A plus B? And then we create our chain. This looks a little bit more complex, but let's break it 
through step by step. So the first part of the chain is a dictionary. The dictionary has two keys which match the input variables here of our prompt template. And to create the value of this A key, we use item getter on a dictionary called foo. So foo will be passed in here and bar here. So we use the item getter method here. So this has to be a callable and we pass the output to the runnable lambda function. And this will now run the length function. So this will be a number, the length of the input of this variable here. For the second key, this will be a little bit more complex because we use the a multiple length function which takes in a dictionary text one and text two. As you can see, this is text one and this is text two. So we have to create it like this. We use item getter again and item getter again here for foo and bar and then pass that to this function. And then the output here, which is a dictionary, we pass into the prompt template. We pass that to the LLM and we pass that to the output parser. So let's run this. And then we can see that this now returns three plus nine equals 12. Okay, last but not least, let's have a look at the interface itself. So far, we only used the invoke method, but there are different methods for different use cases. So let's create a simple example here with just a prompt and a model with a single input. And if we don't want to use invoke, we can also stream the data. So for example, we do it like this. We can stream it token by token but in a Jupyter Notebook, this does not work so well. As you can see here, we can see it a little bit, but yeah, that's a streaming interface. Then we've got our already well-known invoke interface. And this works like this. So we get back the iMessage with the content. And we also have got the option to use the batch method. As you can see, this takes in a list of dictionaries. So we make a two LLM calls here, not a single one. So if you run this, we get back a list of AI messages. The same uh, stream, invoke and batch also works with async. So this works the same way, but just with A in front of the method. So A stream instead of stream, A invoke instead of invoke and so on. Okay, that was the code. Now my two cents about this new topic. In general, it's a nice addition, but I have some cons against it. It's another abstraction layer which makes the code far less Pythonic and readability is king, especially in Python. More complex chains can become quite unreadable. Can you identify what's going on here? For me, it's quite hard. So with classes and methods, for me, it's easier to grasp. So would I use it? Probably yes, but only for prototyping. For production ready code and more complex chains, I probably will stick to the old way. But of course, that's only my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new LangChain expression language. If you liked the video, give it a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Bye bye.